Uh, hi, my name is Shruti. Uh, I am an engineering dropout. <laughs> no, I don't even. Okay, fine. Uh, I did engineering for six months, and fortunately, I decided to leave it, and then I studied psychology. This was when I was in my second year of the college when I used to run a blog uh, where I used to post all these positive, nice, happy stories. And you know, I was also working in different media companies at that point of time, and they would reject those stories, you know, because they were not very TRP friendly, uh, if you see. And I started putting all those stories up on a blog, and uh, that's how it started. It was never supposed to be a startup startup. Uh, so when I started Chaipan, I just wanted to write and chill, but you know, eventually we built a good uh, subscriber base, and uh, people started liking it. And uh, somebody told me, okay, now you should do this like a startup. Up. and uh, that's how we started uh, so it's been very interesting you know because every day I'm learning a new thing and our business model was never defined when we started right it just eventually evolved you know as in when we thought of things so we started telling stories and then we figured out okay let's also do events you know because from events I find very interesting stories and you know we were getting very good response from tier 2 and tier 3 cities and that's why we decided to start Chaipani in Hindi it's this initiative where we want to build a media which is only for positive, um, inspiring stories that are very solution oriented, very um, uh, very much on the foundations of constructive journalism, right? Where where we don't just tell you about the problem, but we also tell you that, you know, this is the solution and these are the people who are working on the solutions and how can you contribute to, to that solution. So my favorite story on the platform so far remains Pooja's uh, story. Pooja Shahi, this girl from a small village called Devaria in UP. Um, she used to use this art called Makram, just khilone banake and accessories banake. She would take in this bag, go in the journal compartment and sell it to uh, cities like Gorakhpur and Kanpur. She had employed over 35 to 40 women in her village, and she was paying almost 200 to 300 rupees per day to every woman. And you know how she had made all of them very independent, financially independent. And I really loved the story. And you know we put up the story on Chai Pani, and uh, one of our reader got in touch with her. Now both of them have started a company. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, please go to chaipani.com, subscribe to our newsletter, we don't spam, we just put one newsletter a week and you will love it because it will have only 5 stories, 5 really inspiring stories. STEM wishes. I run a business of telling stories. I make money out of telling stories. And today, I don't have a story to tell you, but... Uh, I have many, many stories to tell you. When I was a kid uh, in school, I was one of those children who every child in the class hates. I was one of those children who would score 99 out of 100 marks, but would still go up to the teacher, ask for a supplementary reinspection to get that one mark extra. So there was once, there was a dictation test in our class. Dictation hota hai, just may teacher, she tells the words, and uh, there's a sheet of paper where you're supposed to write it in the correct spelling. So it was a 10 mark dictation test, and uh, 10 words, one mark each. When the results came, I had 9 out of 10 marks. I looked at my sheet, and there was a red cross next to a word which was very, very difficult. The word was cat. I could not spell cat correctly. My spelling of cat was K-A-T. Our teacher had taught the spelling of cat as C-A-T. So I go up to the teacher, throw my tantrums, and a classic punishment. My teacher sends me to the last row of the boys' row, uh, last bench of the boys' row. You know, they think, oh, go have fun. So I go there, I meet this boy who scored 3 out of 10 marks. I take his sheet, and I see where he went wrong, and my eye goes right to the word cat. His spelling of cat is Q-E-T, which is wrong. So if I look back, my spelling of cat, which was K-A-T, was wrong. And so was his spelling of cat, which was Q-E-T, was wrong. And my cat was as wrong as his cat. However, I could have argued that my cat is better than his cat because the dictionary recognizes it, because it's the phonetically correct way of spelling a cat. Neil Tyson, in one of his speeches, said how we have made a system where there is one wrong, 
but there is one answer and everything else is not an answer even if there are better answers than the existing answers human brain in the absence of social wiring is capable of coming up with ideas of original thoughts of of creative ways of solving stuff ideas that are simple ideas that can bring a difference like kalyani's idea kalyani is a friend she is an entrepreneur four years from now kalyani was a 20 year old kid college kid who was confused kalyani was extremely disheartened to see how people with physical disabilities were not able to find love pyar to sabka hota hai sabko milna chahiye kalyani went on to build the world's first matchmaking app for people with physical disabilities it was a simple idea simple solution put together what a difference so far kalyani and her team they have matched over 5000 people with physical disabilities help them find love has it changed the world maybe maybe not but it has changed the world for 5000 people two years back when i started chai pani i was a college going student final year uh, still trying to figure out uh, ways to make up for a one year lost because i dropped out of engineering while i was on the way over here a volunteer showed me this river on the way and said it flows in the opposite direction and i was like what a rebel and i was one of those rivers you know you put me to engineering i want to study psychology you put me to psychology i want to do journalism so i would do different part time jobs and in one of my jobs where i was working as a journalist i realized the amazing the amazing power of media the power that media has to manipulate people the power that media has to change people to move the society media does not only mirror the society it has the power to move it now before i proceed i want to ask the audience and you will reply me with applause how many of you feel upset and depressed after seeing newspapers and news channels and this was not the way how i wanted to move the world is it important to report corruption and crimes and famine inequality and holding the power responsible for everything that goes wrong definitely yes how ever as much as we have to look where we want to move away from it is also important to look where we want to move towards so i went up to every major news media in my city telling them give me one column give me one hour slot 30 minute slot on the tv where i can tell stories of people who are inspiring i can tell stories that could inspire the audience to be the better version of themselves but since every minute on the tv and every centimeter square of a newspaper comes with a cost has a revenue scale attached to it nobody agreed so i went out went up to the internet free medium build a platform chaipani.com to tell stories of people who are like you like like you you know people who are doing incredibly amazing stuff or people who are battling their daily wars people who have lessons to share when i started chaipani did i know how to build a build a media company nope did i know how to build a startup zero idea however i knew one thing and that one thing was that somebody had to do it and at that point the somebody i recognized was me so i went out started telling stories of people and people picked it up and this was a time when i learned a very good lesson from a little boy dinesh i met in vizag now i'm a little geographically challenged i i tend to get lost in the easiest of the places so i was in vizag trying to explore the place and i got lost at to it i broke my chappals so i was looking for somebody to help me and out of everybody who could not understand what i was trying to say or i could not understand what they were trying to say dinesh was somebody who came up to me new english hindi said maine apna didi homework kar liya hai i will take you to a cobbler so we started going and on the way i asked him dinesh what do you want to become when you grow up and dinesh said uh, computer science engineer banunga and i asked him why dinesh tells me barish mein hamare ghar pe pipes mein se pani girta hai और कभी कभी वो पानी घर के खाने में गिर जाता है और उस दिन खाना नहीं मिलता सो आई वॉन्ट टू ग्रो अप एंड आई वॉन्ट टू फिक्स ऑल द पाइप एंड आई वॉन्ट टू फिक्स पाइप फॉर एवरीबडी एल्स सो आई टोल दिनेश तो उसके लिए कंप्यूटर साइंस इंजीनियर नहीं उसके लिए आपको सिविल इंजीनियर बनना पड़ेगा शायद 
सो ही टेक्स अ पॉज लुक्स अराउंड लुक्स एट मी सिस ठीक है तो मैं सिविल इंजीनियर बन जाऊंगा and this was a very important lesson that dinesh taught me that if your why is clear if your why is strong enough your how will figure its way out when i started chai pani probably i did not know how to go about it i did not know how to build a startup or or any of those fancy jargons like ibitas or your hockey stick somebody asked me what's your hockey stick and uh, i realized no i am not a sports player i i don't know what a hockey stick is Dinesh made me realize if your why is strong enough, your how will figure out. If your why is strong enough, it will make you run. It will make you not sleep. It will make you do things that can take whatever you've never imagined. And at that point, when your why is so strong, you will give everything you have. When we started Chai Pani, I did not have money to build a platform. I did not have money to pay people. So we turned to the crowd, you know, crowd like you, where we told everybody, okay, contribute from fifty-one rupees to five thousand rupees to fifty thousand rupees, whatever. I want to do this, and I need money for it. You know, for somebody who comes from a uh, from an upper middle class family who has done respectable jobs, was it was it easy to ask for money? And I was giving nothing in return. I was only asking for a favor. it was terrible it was embarrassing however it was a very very humbling experience in less than 11 days 200 people got together from different sections of the society contributed gave us money to build something that could inspire them that could inspire everybody out there and this was also a moment when i realized i could do anything to build this platform i could give whatever it takes like geeta she was married at 15 geeta thought okay this is a good get away i'll get married because my father is very abusive she had lost her mother and she thought marriage is a good get get away from her abusive father however geeta was proved wrong from day one when her husband started abusing her when her husband started raping her so geeta thought okay let me give him a kid probably maybe then he'll change geeta was proved wrong again in the third month of her pregnancy geeta tells in one of uh, one of her speeches that she gave at our, at one of her events she says how her husband would keep his knees on her for 15 to 20 minutes hit her with a cylinder and abused her and even during her pregnancy continued to rape her when geeta forcefully gave birth to her second child one day one day she woke up and she realized i cannot give this future to my children i cannot give this future to myself and she went out of the house homeless no education no employment she left the house geeta stayed in gurudwaras she made 1000 rotis every day she would wash utensils and uh, and clean houses of people and cook at their places she did everything it took to give herself a life of dignity Today Geeta is one of the most popular stunt women of India. She is the one who performs stunts for biggest of the actresses Deepika Padukone, Aishwarya Rai, Alia Bhatt, Sonakshi Sinha. In fact, she is one of the only women of India who has done car and bike chase stunts. Geeta today has her own house in Malad in Bombay. Geeta is happy. When Geeta was giving her speech at one of her events, there was one line she constantly kept saying despite everything she's been through geeta maintained life bahut achhi hai life na bahut sundar hai aapko bas mehnat karna hai usse acha banane ke liye you know there was there were no growth hacks there were no shortcuts in her speech and this was what inspired me about geeta resilience determination determination to give whatever it takes to keep doing things shamelessly ceaselessly keep doing it on chai pani we are telling stories that bring us alive that bring people like you and i alive you know you would say how you know motivational speeches and motivational quotes are all on your whatsapp they are available everywhere however it is incredibly powerful when you hear the story of the person who is sitting next to you just look around the person who is sitting right behind you it's incredibly powerful when a 80 year old bhagwati oza tells me in a in a interview that the formula to have a long interesting happy life 
is to always be curious. And then she moves aside and quietly tells me I'm to stay single. It is incredibly powerful when a little child tells me the formula to be successful is to do your homework on time. It's incredibly powerful when you look around, when you look around stories of people who are doing great work. We as a media have the power to bring people together, to bring communities together in a time where there are lakhs of people who are ready to sacrifice their lives for a, God, for a self-made Godman. We need to build communities together. We need to bring communities and micro-communities together and get them to do good work. And this is what we're building at Chai Pani. We're building a community of change makers, of, of entrepreneurs and innovators and artists and anybody and everybody who has an inspiring story to share and somebody who could inspire somebody else. Thank you. Hi, Shruti. How are you doing? I am doing good. How are you? I'm so excited to analyze your handwriting because I know in this uh, lockdown, we have spoken about graphology and analysis over and over again. Yeah. So here we are finally analyzing your handwriting. So before you ask me questions, I have to say a few things about your writing. Okay. Uh, anything you have in mind before I start? I am nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would say as you should be. Yeah. <laughs> So yes, let's look please. at a few things that come to my mind as the first thing. Now, when I look at your writing, your handwriting moves upwards, which means if you write on a blank sheet of paper and mm. not in this sample, but anytime you write on an unruled paper, your handwriting starts going upwards. Yeah. Now, most people feel if your handwriting is going up, that means you're very positive and that is a progressive sign. Now, let me break the myth for all of us. It is a sign of being somebody who is an enthusiastic person and positivity is what they showcase because they're enthusiastic. So if they believe in an idea that is really, really exciting for them, they jump on and they just start executing or start talking about that idea with lots of excitement. Whether they like it, whether they do not like it after some time, we do not know. But you know how some people are very, very uh, energetic. Some people are very sarcastic. Some people are very critical. The normal nature with which you, Shruti, uh, function is being enthusiastic with everything that comes your way. Uh, so that's my first point of assessment. Over to you. What questions do you have? Yeah, this is this is so true. And you know, when you say I just jump onto the ideas without, and I don't know how long I will sustain my interest or enthusiasm about that idea. Uh, and that is like a very, and it's been like five years I've been running my company. Usse pehle bhi, matlab, pata hai, parents of bachpan mein humko hobby classes mein lagate hai. Toh haap nahi nahi guitar classes mein cha rahe hai. Pehle ka ek mahina toh macha denge maha pe ja ke. And then suddenly you just don't want to go. And you are sometimes right. too ashamed to say this to the world. Zinko aapne itna enthusiasm dikha di hai apna. To say that, right. oh, I'm not interested about it, in it anymore. And uh, there is a certain level of shame associated with that. And I think uh, this also happens when you are running a business that, you know, sometimes you start initiatives, you start things that you don't feel like continuing after a while, which I think has been my trade. I don't know how natural is it or is it for everyone or is it just me that consistency, like I told you that, you know, it's a big problem for me and I would start things and eventually my interest is over. I mean, it will be one year, 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 and I want to move on to something new. I get bored when things get all settled and uh, in an autopilot mode and I just get bored out of it. Then. So it is very interesting for you to understand this as a pattern. You know, I look at graphology as a diagnostic tool, which means you can literally look at things which are not working for you, hmm. take score and then start implementing them differently. Now, what is enthusiasm? You see a possibility that this business, this work, this idea can get you to the next level. Right. Now, in some time, you realize that it is not taking you to the next level that you had thought about, hmm. which means if you said that that guitar class or that one next project will get me, say, to stage five, hmm. and it has only got me to stage two. So instead of looking at the progress, you really start taking score of why am I not on stage five? I think I need some other boost or other enthusiastic yeah. idea to jump on to. So please evaluate that for a moment, because if I look at your ability to plan and execute, I do not see that as a challenge. Hmm. 
Hmm. What do I mean? That when you write your letter F, and if you write it in a cursive style, which means you go up, you make one loop, you come down and make another loop, both on the right side. If your F is like that, in a cursive style, a complete F, that shows good planning and good execution skill. In most of your projects, when you're working at them, you are good with your planning and execution. But it is only a matter of feeling conviction or not feeling conviction. Yeah. Like right? sometimes, so you, you know, have, I know like I have to get a few things done and it won't even, it's not even a matter of hours for me to get it done. But I procrastinate, I procrastinate, I procrastinate, I procrastinate, I procrastinate, I procrastinate. So, and and most people think procrastination is about lack of execution. Hmm. It is not. Procrastination is actually about lack of conviction or lack of clarity. So hmm. in that moment, if you catch yourself procrastinating, stop and take take score. Ask yourself, wait a minute. I, I think I'm pushing this because somewhere I'm no more convinced or I'm not convinced about the way we are going about it. And hmm. that requires... I would say more awareness than other people because so many times we do not realize what is getting me to feel the way I'm feeling in this moment. So that is a big, uh, I would say, red flag for you to look at because yeah. no matter how convinced you are in the beginning of the project, in the middle of it, you just taper and then you feel, you start questioning and doubting yourself. Yeah. How do you, how do you keep that energy going? Like, how do you keep that interest going? And it's not just projects, it's also people. Like, I really get bored of people too soon. <laughs> and <laughs> like, how, how do you fix that? So, so let's look at it. Okay. Boredom is what? Boredom is me feeling the need that the thing should make me feel happier. The yeah. thing should engage me. The movie should entertain me. Hmm. Now, when we give all the responsibility of our joy and our excitement on other things and other people, and when they fail to entertain us, we feel, I think I'm bored of this person. Hmm. But I, I would say switch gears and ask yourself, if I take responsibility of my engagement and my, say, ent- entertainment, how would I go about it? And then you would not expect other people to perform for you. You may find 15 people who would perform for you at different levels hmm. or people who would engage with you on, at, at, you know, in different activities for you to continue feeling that level of energy. So right. the core nature of your personality here is being, is being elated, is being engaged, is hmm. being turned on, if I may say, with the idea that you pick up. Now that is your, and that is a shot. Like it's like of opening a fizz bottle yeah. like of Coca-Cola or Pepsi bottle. So in the beginning, there is so much of, you know, fizz coming and you're like so yeah. excited about it. But in no time, it settles down. Now you have to know that you can really create smaller checkpoints for you to constantly feel this way. I think that's the easiest way for you to deal with this particular problem. And please do not think that you have problem with execution. I think you're really mm-hmm. good with it. Right now, you think that you have that problem and you keep repeating that to yourself, creating wrong assumptions about your own capacities. Hmm. Okay. Any other question you have? Yeah, you know, something with this, you know, when you you spoke about lack of clarity, again, you know, I think that is a problem that I face a lot and I would not start doing something till I'm 100% clear about step one, step two, step three, like a flowchart in my head and on the paper. I just don't start doing that. And sometimes I feel, okay, that wastes a lot of time and not just my time, but also people dependent on my, my decision making to start executing the work. So yeah. I think that's also like a big bottleneck in how I work as a founder and then how other people are also stuck because of me. So did you analyze something about that in my handwriting? Yeah. Yes. So when we look at uh, execution or in this case, looking at a plan, looking at something that I would love to connect to in the future, this is about short term thinking or long term thinking. Yeah. Like most entrepreneurs are taught that you should have both of them in equal proportion. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is as a personality, you can have either of them. Either you think short term with like end result in mind or you think very long term with have more strategies in mind. Now, let's accept as a person, when I look at your writing, you think short term, not very short term, but your overall goals are around three years down the line. And when you have uh, those those goals, you must have end result in mind, which is not like I would go there and figure it out exactly what would I do? How would I function? What will I achieve by doing this? When you ask these questions, these are really, really important questions. Mm. I'm going to ask you something, Shruti. Probably, uh, you know, 
probably are struggling with your investors to convince them your approach or probably other people in your team are not getting what you're trying to say here. But does it happen? And I'm connecting both these points that we spoke. When you have complete clarity, when you have your end result defined for you, you go with complete aggression and complete energy to achieve that task. But when you lack it, when you do not have that clarity, you sit there and you keep postponing things. A lot, a lot. In fact, I I think that I keep avoiding meeting those people because I'm like, Achha, bhi, agar pooch liya, toh kya and it's not like I don't know, it's just that I don't have clarity. So I keep, right. uh, I'll keep avoiding people, I'll keep avoiding calls and I'll keep avoiding replying to emails and all of that. And uh, I know that, you know, it's not a solution to my problem, but, uh, and like, you know, I should at least keep communicating that, you know, I'm figuring things out. And uh, that is something I have been working on myself for like last one year. Uh, but no, I know that, point. yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but here is a point. <laughs> now, when you have both these things going on, and I'm just going to give you a midway Hmm. Uh, tool or hack to try this out now every time every week you got to definitely work at realigning your clarity hmm. okay, okay so you have this large goal in mind which is three years down the line but you do not have clarity in the moment how this person how this project how this idea will actually help me get to that larger idea hmm. so sit down and make the notes every week about these questions that you have please do not ignore them because then what you'll end up doing is you pile up all the a questions and they yeah. become one big blob in front of you and then you keep resisting hmm. and one of the things that you would have seen over and over again that you feel uninterested in your own business for yeah. phases in phases like for a yeah month. yeah for in a phases. month you're like yeah i know i want to do it but i don't know whether i want to do it yes. and that shows inconsistency to the other world hmm. now it is very interesting and it's so beautiful when i look at your writing i don't see consistency as a problem when i look at your okay. writing i do not think you're pessimistic or procrastinator which is very very interesting i do not see the problem of somebody who just wants to give excuses you're rather okay. end result oriented but because you create all of this without understanding what is causing this problem you create in a way like a, a monster out of this and the monster yeah. keeps chasing and all you do is you keep doing firefighting pretty much every day yes. you have somebody <laughs> or the other chasing you that you got to do this you got to do that you got to finish this and then you wake up and you say, I don't think I'm enjoying my work. I'm enjoying my life. Whatever, like whatever the, the internal dialogue goes. My God, it's so true. <laughs> so sit down and evaluate. Everyday journaling will definitely help. Mm-hmm. And I want to give you that one question of journaling that would that would be very proper or matching your situation right now. So write down your larger goal at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And every week or if possible, every day, ask yourself how what activities can I choose today that would allow me to achieve that larger goal? Okay. Because you get focused on the very, very minute goals and mm-hmm. then they be, and then you lack priority. So mm-hmm. definitely sit down and say, what activities can I choose today that would help me achieve the larger goal? Now, that question might be applicable to everybody uh, if you are really struggling with setting your focus or setting your priorities on on path every now and then so if you lose right. that and you do not know how to come back how to get back on that train again then this is the question that would help all right definitely i would really try this now uh, let's go to the next segment it's called autograph please where okay. i'm going to talk about how your signature talks about things for which you're misunderstood okay yeah okay. Matlab, i don't know how to? accurate my signature would be because uh, thi thi na, main, i would idealize my father about everything so i even copied okay. his signature so like i've sat down and i've copied his signature and now that has become my signature on all the official documents so i can't even go back to changing it so i want but, to ask you in your signature what do you write what are the letters there I don't know. It's just some design my father used to do. But one uh, letter is C for Chaturvedi. And uh, okay. yeah, that's it. And, uh, and, and I put and an then, S now. And I put an S now. My father wouldn't put an S. But I had to make it different some or the other way because all the documents would ma- match. So I put an S on it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, 
just just to so so you know signatures talk about how people perceive you they talk mm-hmm. about how you want to be projected because these are our official identities right yeah. your handwriting is about who you are but when you sign you want people to look at you in a certain way right. and all of us have some image that we are building we have some you know how we choose our profile pictures on instagram we yeah. make choices that would make us look a certain way similarly mm-hmm. signature is like our lifetime profile picture if i may say that's why we think subconsciously about what all we want people to think about us and that's what i'm going to talk about now i'm i'm using the word misunderstanding specifically because when we project something that we are not aware of that leads to people understanding us in a different light that we are not mm-hmm. and that's why that that misunderstanding <clears throat> is caused most of the time in your case people mostly feel that you are very analytical and you keep asking questions until cows come home and they find it extremely difficult to convince you about their point of view yes like this is what my friends have also told me as well that you know i think they use a better word to call it headstrong but uh, okay. yeah and <laughs> and I, i remember this friend telling me that you know you should also sometimes try getting yourself to be proven wrong so that you know you're open to different perspectives uh, that way but uh, yeah and you are very true about uh, about asking a lot of questions and i think sometimes i also come out as arrogant uh, just because i say it as it is and and i think i honestly don't have mental space to sugarcoat things and then you know take care of the other person's feelings or how are you going to feel about it because eventually the end message is the same so sometimes so i yeah, would I end say, up i would say that that <clears throat> definitely happens but that is not misunderstanding that's how <clears throat> who you are so this is like you even in your real life you speak the same way i'm talking about yeah. misunderstanding where as a person you are not somebody who would ask questions only for the heck of it you are yeah. curious but it comes across that you're trying to shoot people down by asking those questions that yes, is not your objective all the time yes <laughs> and is there any example in personal have... relationships yeah i i think i uh, say for example you know like at home like right now i'm at home and with my parents and they would do a lot of things that which they don't have an answer to you know wo kar rahe hain kyunki unko kisi ne bola hai karne ke liye ab wo mujhe bol rahe hain karne ke liye and i would be genuinely curious to ask okay where is this coming from and sometimes i think and i think usually indian parents would be like ha zuban mat chalao or uh, question kyu kar rahe ho so and and you know it's very difficult to explain them that i'm not trying to argue i'm actually genuinely curious why you are asking me to do this and if you don't have an answer let's find it out together but i cannot communicate that uh, effectively now sure I, i i agree and that is definitely something in your public image does not happen if if somebody mm-hmm. talks to you at in person and i'm not saying family but i'm saying thing so public image is a lot to do with how you react with other people mm. how you react with people who are strangers but in your case is also family because you don't live with your parents so yeah. now at your yeah, home it's suddenly like a new space that Absolutely. that you are into any other question you have in your mind Hmm. I think uh, so. When you when you speak about having a long term approach, how do you you know? And this is a question you know. And most entrepreneurs, you know, when you are meeting your investors and they ask you what's your vision, like what? How do you come up with the vision? You know, when somebody says, and you know, the reason I don't plan a lot of long term now is because I have done that in the past, and nothing works out the way you planned, and that's very disappointing. So I'm like, okay, ha, kal ka kisne dekha? Let's just plan two years and then go forward. Especially 2020, all of us had like such enormous plans. and everything just went out of the window right and uh, sure. that is quite disappointing you know when you have meticulously planned everything and you have aligned all your life goals accordingly and things don't go the way they are and i think that's one of the reasons i have started doing this one day at a time uh, so how do you balance both of it because and that's so true you need a vision at the end of it you don't need a vision but i also feel the commitment to a process is okay. way more important like what you tell other people at times depends on the general you know direction in which you're moving okay. and you can tell them that this is what i have in mind or this is a kind of impact i want to have or create at the end of the day okay. which is understandable but when you literally come back and think about what do i want to achieve what do i want to do it is always about the process when you write the stories that you do hmm. or when you connect with people and you uh, come up with your perspective and you become the contribution you know that how much it matters to you you know how that is your perk of being in this process hmm. i feel 
being result oriented and while convincing the story to other people most of the time you forget why you began the story yes. in your life yeah okay so when i ask you to journal i really want you to come back and constantly connect with your own story your own perspective and that is something most entrepreneurs do not keep in mind they go they begin something because they're passionate about it as they go with investors and other external you know validation of the idea hmm. they forget the whole passion for which they began the journey this is and this so is where true, the you know especially running a media company because you know you're trying to impress your readers and this is something i even wrote on my instagram yesterday that you know it's like this endless cycle you want to keep uh, impressing your advertisers so you can impress your investors and so you can impress more readers and it just never ends and it just gets tiring in your head that okay like this is not the wall dance i subscribed for right like this is not what i signed up for and this is not the reason why i started a company i could have done a exactly. job and i could have done all of this for other people yeah. now having said that uh, there's one of the authors i really like her name is maria popova mm-hmm. she runs this beautiful brain picking, uh, brain picking yeah. uh, newsletter and she was interviewed by someone and she was talking about this whole process of constantly writing articles and you know uh, subscribers liking it or not liking it and and constantly feeding the external mm-hmm. world and she said if i do not feel i am engaged with what i am doing i know in no time i will shut this and i will walk away from it mm-hmm. okay so it is very very important for me to know that i'm doing this and i'm also uh, satisfying the reader within So yes I'm talking to the reader outside but if I'm not convinced if I do not feel turned on by what I'm doing and I'm using this word specifically because you, in your case if you don't have that enthusiasm and that experience while mm-hmm. walking on the journey you sit there and you start questioning all the results all the money all the perks that you have received Yeah but you know it's so, it's like a constant dialogue that keeps going you know I started as a writer and that's one thing that I don't do at all because now I've become a business person so I don't write at all anymore and uh, sometimes i think i've actually forgotten how to write and uh, uh, it makes sense you know like i cannot be an artist and a business person at the same time because i see okay like being a business person like i have responsibility of a lot of people now that i have to fulfill and i cannot go back to fulfilling that passion anymore that that the whole yeah, thing but if you thing. go completely away from it you would wonder why am i here exactly and if you if you take at least say one hour in your whatever schedule mm-hmm. busiest schedule that you have and it's okay i'm going to do this because it matters to me and yeah. if you create a, a routine or a mechanism in which you would do it say every week one piece for one hour of writing because you got to do it and you know mm. it's like how you nurture yourself if you if you feel your mind or body is not functional then no matter what you're doing and how well you're doing it you won't sustain it you won't okay. be able to enjoy it. so it's not for the end result it's not for other people but it's to make sure that you are enjoying the business that you're running absolutely thank you so much for this this is very very interesting and pretty true you know because about graphology i have i've always had this one reservation that it's not scientific that you know like how do you know because it's not like a legit science and uh, that's mm-hmm. one of the reasons that you know i keep i keep uh, i keep interest in it but okay i don't trust it a, a lot uh, how does it work really like how scientific is it or is it so, not at all uh, it is considered as a pseudo science because uh, for any subject to be be scientific it has to be empirical which means multiple uh, people can come together multiple graphologists should say the same thing about the same sample hmm. and it did not happen when it was tested so as a label graphology received a pseudo science thappa <laughs> on it and that was like the biggest struggle hmm. few years ago when it was tested i look at it as a mathematical study and complete art yeah. because when you look at the strokes they mathematically talk about and with precision about how you think how you behave but it is also an art because to understand a human being which is such mm-hmm. a complex mechanism you can't put only numbers and talk about it you literally have to sit there and understand how these five behaviors are working together to create the results that we are talking about so i feel after more than i think 15000 samples by now when you constantly see something your eye gets trained to see the the gaps and to see how people mm. think and why they see the way they see the whole world so i feel that part is very artistic and mm. that's why it is subjective to the person who's doing it 
but there is a mathematical part like i could not have spoken with so much of accuracy and confidence about you without having the mathematical precision of the subject the way it has so i hmm. think it's both wonderful you know you know as you I, as i see you speak with so much of conviction and so much of passion there's this one question that i have and that's one thing that i think it struggles me and a lot of my entrepreneur friends as well is this constant uh, you know having to choose between having a work life balance like do you want to be a hustler or do you want to have a balanced happy life or do you want to be rich or do you want to be happy uh, or ye constant chalta hi rehta hai hamesha matlab some days you know i want to be out there and do everything some days i'm like okay i just want to be home and just do my work and live a peaceful happy life so how does one come to a midway to this conversation all the time you know because so you first thing, startups around you growing raising funds and growing their valuation and all of that and you know you don't want to get into that phase but you also sure. want to i i hear you completely so i would say first thing as a person you must accept that every 3 to 5 years as a woman you know this for sure that you keep changing as a person mm. so your priorities right now what do you think are your ultimate priorities and your desires and your dreams will change mm. and they will become something else you know you are you will feel about your same business in a different way i look at creating a plan as a guideline to function but with most entrepreneurs that i have worked with i i really talk a lot about having everyday alignment and everyday choice to do what you're doing so mm-hmm. it has to feel the process has to wake you up you know process has to make you feel that this is worth the shot if you feel disengaged with the process it's like a player okay you might be a, uh, you might become a captain but if you mm-hmm. really like the game that you're playing you want to play the game you also want to become a captain yes and you want to win all the matches but you also want to play the game if you do not get to play the game it is not as much fun and then people suffer so people do get funding they get every every tick mark required mm-hmm. but they then develop physical problems or suddenly you know get heart attacks and and go through tremendous amount of stress mm-hmm. the hustle is important like i feel every day on an average i work land up working like 12 to 14 hours a day but the hustle is nurturing then you don't feel exhausted if the mm-hmm. hustle is not nurturing then you are like oh my god why am i doing it so it's not what you do it's <clears throat> about how you feel about what you do hmm you know you should actually quote so this <laughs> no, this is this is really that after trying all high performance hacks the only thing i can talk about if you feel inspired to do the act activities that you're doing in a day mm-hmm. is the only way to win long term you can win short term by just having many dogs chasing you and just you performing for the world yeah. and putting the performance that yes i'm doing it yes i'm ticking all the boxes but the actual genuine growth in long run will come when you wake up and you feel inspired excited connected to do things that matter to you and that will require and what do you do when you don't feel inspired like what what do you do on the days you wake up and you don't feel inspired anymore so you accept that and that's okay it's okay not to feel inspired mm-hmm. but i have a rule okay so i say okay <clears throat> for example i want to cultivate this whole yoga practice as my practice or i've been meditating for many years so i say there are days where you don't feel like being on the mat you don't feel like doing anything mm-hmm. now the rule is you just go and sit on the mat for 5 minutes if mm-hmm. you cannot do that day any workout just show up show up every single day and just see what all you can do but do not lie to yourself do not push pressure do not like really force yourself to do things you don't mean to do yeah <laughs> all right that is very very that's very very important and how to know that by journaling you will create your own gps mechanism to mm. know how much am i lying how much am i enjoying how much how much inspired i am now if you really expect or desire your life to be from one inspirational moment to another to another to another if you start journaling around it it'll be, you'll be surprised how you start seeing your life being on that path mm. and i'm saying this after experimenting with many 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 people so give it a shot definitely i'm very excited i've been i've been journaling for quite like i've been practicing the flow stroke for quite some time now and uh, yeah let's see how this goes so all the best and Thank i'm so, so happy much, that we had this very quick but at the same time very pointed conversation yeah. about an entrepreneur <laughs> thank, thank you, you thank so you much. for joining bye bye bye